This is Albizia julibrisson, silk tree or mimosa. So uh, a lot of us have seen this tree around. It's used in uh, a good part of the world. And um, I live in California, and uh, this is uh, Inland Valley. This is in Danville, California, the tree you're looking at. It's uh, east of San Francisco in a warm inland valley during the summers. It's 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We have very low humidity, 15 to 20 percent humidity. And um, winters, uh, 20 degree range Fahrenheit is our uh, usually our lowest point. And um, these can handle a wide range of conditions. They can go down to as low as uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. And um, as you can see where we are, it's, it can al also handle a lot of heat. I want to jump into these flowers and the foliage that you're looking at. This is what it's really well known for is these beautiful pink and white flowers very fuzzy and soft, but I also want to jump to this. Um, that's what the flowers become, and if we're using this in a design, this is a super important thing to consider. These create a huge mess because there's so many flowers as they dry up and fall off of the tree. This is what the understory looks like. This is a street where they used it as a street tree and you can see that the sidewalk and the gutters and everything around them is just covered in this mess. And um, one of the main reasons I decided to create these videos is just to help give people good guidance and information about these trees because I feel like most of what's in writing is not thorough enough in terms of design decisions with our plants. And that type of a mess created is enough for somebody to really dislike having a tree. I have a client right now taking out a beautiful tree in a house that he bought that's over a patio and the reason he's doing that is because of the mess he can't he cleaned his patio and the next day I was over there and it was totally covered with flowers again and it was attracting bees to boot and um, it's an older couple and they just don't want to deal with the constant mess and um, it had been going on for two months so not only is it messy but it lasts a long time and these are the types of things as designers or a homeowner who's trying to pick a great tree for their yard that you want to consider so I just want to point that out that's the biggest downfall of this tree is that it's very messy and uh, as beautiful as these flowers are and this really unique foliage by the way which I love um, that's something that needs to be considered as long as I'm ragging on this plant the other thing is is that it has a shallow root system that can be invasive and lift paving and it also uh, goes to seed these flowers become long seed pods and during the winter while it's deciduous it can be quite unsightly because the tree can be covered with these uh, brown seed pods um, that follow in the winter. So, uh, and those seeds do drop and this tree will go to seed. We find it suckering and we also find seedlings within yards of more mature trees. So, sorry to be so negative about the tree, but again, uh, a lot of this we're trying to figure out for homeowners, but even if you're doing it for a commercial job, the mess and the different things that are a reality with this tree I think do make it a challenge. I, I've used this once or twice when I was a young designer, but for me the um, downside of these uh, of this tree has kind of outweighed all the positives because the plant, the flowers, as nice as they are, um, there are very few people that don't tell me that low maintenance is their highest priority. And this tree does not begin to qualify as that because of the mess. Let me give you some of the specifications on the tree. As you can see, they're very wide compared to their height. They can get as tall as 30 to 40 feet high, but they're going to be almost double that width in most cases. So this tree you're looking at here, I'm guessing, is about 15 yeah, 15 to 20 years old, and um, it is probably 30 to 35 feet wide and maybe 20 to 22 feet high, so um, much wider than it is tall. And what's neat about that is if you start them trained early enough, you can get a really nice umbrella canopy. You see that quite often with these where they have a nice umbrella canopy. So if you've got an area that you're trying to shade, 
and the mess isn't a problem, this can be a really good candidate for that. And you know, in design, I do want to say that if you're going to use this, my my recommendation is you use it in an area where a mess isn't an issue. That um, it's a, if it's an outlying area that doesn't have paving and people aren't going to try and sit under it, then that's okay. Um, use it there so you at least get to enjoy the show during the summer. And by the way, this is midsummer when these are blooming. This is um, June, July, and into August is typically when this is blooming. Also, this is a deciduous tree. Um, it's uh, it, it goes dormant quite early in our area. And um, these are low water. Once they're established, they can re they get by on very little or no water in our area. So I would consider this quite drought tolerant. Also, if you want to use these as a umbrella canopy, make sure you specify or look for one that has a a, a, a single trunk that's been leadered up while it was young. And that is Albizia julibrisson, silk tree or mimosa.